All right, greetings, everybody. All right, somebody sent me um, uh, information on the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were not so wise. And I always, I never could understand it because it said the wise ones told the unwise ones to go and buy of the oil. So with, um, well, let me explain a little bit first. Uh, oil in the Bible, olive oil, was, it was a Old Testament foreshadowing of the Holy Spirit. You may not believe that, but maybe I could explain it a little bit. For one thing, when you burn, uh, olive oil burns. And that's what they used to use for their lamps, was olive oil. You stick a wick in it, and the olive oil would burn. It would provide light and heat and warmth, right? Um, also, the kings and of Israel would be anointed, their heads would be anointed with oil. So, King David, his he was anointed with olive oil. So, you know, they were to have the Spirit of God, or rule with the Spirit of God, or in the Spirit of God. So, but I guess you could make a whole Bible study on just this point, but just for the sake of argument, olive oil was indicative of the coming of the Holy Spirit. So, with that in mind, let's read chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, words of Christ in red, Jesus speaking. Verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Hmm. All right, the virgins are... Uh, why ten? Well, the northern tribes of Israel were ten. The southern tribes of Judah were basically... Well, you could argue two, but they were part of Benjamin... Levi, which was the tribe for the temple, and then the tribe of Judah, which was the king tribe. So, ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, the church in Christ, right? And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Oh, if you look in the Bible, number five according to some Bible scholars and numerologists, five is the number of grace. So, but I don't want to make a big, you know, you could look at Bollinger or Ivan Pannon or, you know, numbers in scripture. You can look it up and do a study on it. So, five are wise, five are foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. What good is a lamp with no oil to burn? Uh, it's basically, uh, it's like a flashlight with no batteries, right? What is it? It's a paperweight, basically. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, you know, well, you know, the bridegroom's uh, waiting around to go get his bride. They all slumbered and slept, spiritually, physically. Verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now, I don't know if 
any of you know it, but uh, you take a wick and the very, very tip of it near where it burns will turn black with carbon. It'll burn up. So you take a pair of scissors or a knife and you cut the end off so that it'll burn brighter. So your light will be more bright. That's, you know, you trim your trim the lamp. And the foolish virgins, the foolish, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Hmm. The oil, the Holy Spirit, for our lamps are gone out. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. I don't know if that applies, but I'm just throwing that out there. Now, here's the part that really always confused me. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. So here it is. The foolish say, Hey, give us some of your oil, wise ones. And they said, Nope. Otherwise, if we share with you, we ain't going to have enough. So, But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Huh. Oh, that's uh, going to be interesting. So, what are we talking about buying? Hmm. Well, let's take a look. In the book of Proverbs... And according to most Bible scholars, Proverbs was penned by Solomon, who was accredited in the Bible as being the wisest man that ever lived. Well, up until the point that Christ was born, right? But Christ was only, well, he was God in the human flesh. So, in verse uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. It says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. What does Solomon say in verse 23? Proverbs 23, 23. He says, Buy. B-U-Y. Buy. Purchase. Not good buy, but purchase. Buy the truth and sell it not. Huh. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. What is wisdom in the Bible? Wisdom in the Bible is knowing the word of the Lord. Think about it. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Instruction in what? The Word of God. Understanding in what? The Word of God. Buy the truth and sell it not. Verse 24. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. Well, that was not my parents when I was young. I'll guarantee you that. So, all right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 55 about uh, buying. Isaiah 55, verse 1. I'm not sure. I did a, a, an entire series on the book of Isaiah, but I'll be honest with you. After doing over well over a thousand Bible studies, I don't remember what I said about this chapter. Oh, maybe I'm getting old and senile and, I don't know, brain dead. But here we go. Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Oh, wait a minute. It says here, he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. How can you buy when you don't have any money? 
Oh, there's good question. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Hmm. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Hmm. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew thee uh, knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord. Good advice. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, people, let me let me stop here real quick. There was a time when the Lord, the Lord's own hand, closed the door to the ark. And once that ark's door was closed, everything outside drowned, destroyed, gone. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts, the Lord's, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hmm. So, verse 1 again. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, let uh, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, no money, Come ye, buy and eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Good advice. All right, what else about uh, buying? So what are these waters they're talking about? Well... Uh, well, let's, let's take a look at living waters, living water and living waters. Song of Solomon 415, a fountain of gardens, a well of living waters and streams from Lebanon. Jeremiah 213, for my people, my people have committed two evils, not just one, two Double trouble. They have forsaken me. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Uh, living water. What is this living water? Well, we're going to find out soon, but when you got a vessel that leaks, you know, a cup that leaks, you can't hold any water in it, right? That's what a broken cistern is. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. I don't want to be written in the earth. I want to be written up in the, uh, the book of life in heaven. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Zechariah 4.18. I'm sorry. Zechariah 
Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-H, 14, 8. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and winter it uh, shall it be. Hmm. How about John chapter 4? Jesus speaking. Remember, he's at, uh, this is the story of the woman at the well. He asked the Samaritan woman for a drink. And she says, she's basically said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask of me a drink? The, the Samaritans, the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. That's Bob's paraphrase, but yeah, you get the idea. But in John 4.10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith of thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 11, The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? water well guess what jesus is the living water so let's read john 7 38 jesus speaking he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water hmm yes and when Jesus was on the cross, and he was dead, and the, soldier, the Roman soldier took a spear and pierced his side, what came out? Blood and water. Oh, yeah. Blood and water. By his blood. You know, the modern Bible versions delete the word blood dozens of times. Delete that word. Yeah. So, all right, um, did you know there was a, a letter, I think it was Paul, that wrote a letter to the Laodiceans, Laodicea, and uh, it's not in the Bible. Why? Because they probably didn't like it and crumbled it up and threw it in the fire. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but that, that would be my guess, you know. But, um, all right, let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 13. Jesus speaking, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. God's going to chew them up and spit them out, I guess you could say. Well, spit them out. Now, let me ask you a question. What good is lukewarm tea? You know, on a cold day, you want hot tea, right? At least I do, living in Florida, right? Or on a hot summer day, you want cold tea, right? Lukewarm is, yeah. God doesn't want us lukewarm. He'd rather us be cold, our faith. But he'd rather us be on fire and hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my, uh, out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. That sounds like the TBN crowd to me. Benny Hinn, oh yeah, I'm rich. 
I got three different Lear Jets and a couple of Bentleys and Rolls Royces, Mercedes Benzes. I got a house in California, Florida, and and uh, yeah, I'm rich. Well, I don't know if he has all those things, but you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he did. But because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. You know, there are actually people that teach that if you're rich, it's because God has blessed you with those things. Whereas, uh, when, when the Lord, well, look at the, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man went to hell on the flames. Lazarus was poor and... He was in Abraham's bosom. Uh, I guess you could say that was the non-smoking section with the flames. Yeah. No flames. The non-smoking section. The rich man was in the smoking section. Yeah. When God gives you all the things of this world that, uh, that you want, look out, buddy. Look out. Look out. Because thou sayest, I am rich. And increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor. Wait a minute, they're rich. They're rich physically, but they're poor spiritually. And blind. They're blind spiritually. And naked. Why are they? They got clothing on. How are they naked? They're spiritually naked they have no cloak they have no covering for their sin that's what that means they're wretched miserable poor blind and naked remember christ gives his people a white robe of righteousness washed in his blood their sins are covered they're not naked Adam and Eve were naked in the garden after they sinned, remember? Oh, yeah. Listen to the verse 18. After they're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Verse 18, Jesus says, I counsel thee to buy. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. You may not know it, but gold is representative of God. Well, take off the L, and what do you got? God. Gold. God. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Well, you'd have to do some studying in the book of Leviticus. Um, the ark was overlaid with gold. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Did you know that the sin in Noah's days was covered with water, baptism, essentially? But do you know that when Christ returns, the world's going to be baptized with fire? And I did an entire Bible study on fire. I'm not sure if it's a playlist or not, but uh, and our, our bad works are going to be burned up. Oh, yeah. We're going to be baptized with fire. And if you're interested, you can, you know, read about it or listen to my Bible study on it. Um, that's why I'm saying the Bible is like a, a cloth and you got all these threads that all interconnect and they're all tied together. You just can't pull one out and make a, uh, it's hard to pull one out and make a Bible study because they all go together. And I like doing topical Bible studies. I like doing that, but you know, I, there's so many, I, I hesitate to say rabbit trails or rabbit holes. There, there's so many ways I could go and make studies on, but, you know, time is, time is a factor. And uh, not only is time a factor, but, you know, you got to decide what's important and, you know, what to say for later. All right, so let's keep reading verse uh, 18. I counsel thee to buy of me, Jesus, gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, spiritually rich. Uh, what did Jesus say about being rich in heaven? 
said, sell your earthly possessions, give to the poor that thou may, that you may have uh, riches in heaven. Um, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Oh, we need to stop right there. All right, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne, the throne of God, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed, or clothed? What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Hey, uh, what are these people that are dressed in these white robes? And where did they come from? Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Oh, yeah. Well, what are you asking me a question? this question for you know the answer oh yeah and he said unto me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb oh see their sins their bodies sins their sinful body their covering was was cleansed and washed in the blood of Christ Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, it does to me. I hope I'm explaining that good. So. Revelation 19.8. 19.8. Revelation. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. All right, let's take a look at white robes. Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, clothing, and I will not, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Did you know your name can be blotted out of the book of life? Oh, yeah. Tell that to the eternal security, once saved, always saved crowd. They don't believe that. Well, that's because they don't bother to read the Bible. You know, these people will take one verse out of context and build an entire demon nominational church out of it. Yeah. I mean, that's scary to know that your name could be blotted out of the book of life. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Revelation 6, 11, and we'll be done with this. And white robes, white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. See, the pre-trib rapture crowd, they cannot explain this. This don't make no sense to them. See, Christ doesn't come back to redeem his people and his church and resurrect them in their new bodies until the last person who dies for the faith has been killed. But they have the church up in heaven uh, having the marriage supper of the Lamb and everybody else on earth is getting wiped out and murdered. That is their theology. No. Christ only comes back once at the end of the tribulation he doesn't come back one and a half times or one in, or three times or however you want to look at it. All right, let's go back to 
Revelation 3 and verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment. Huh. That thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. You're, you're not going to put ointment in your eyes. So this has got to be some kind of a figure of speech. My opinion. And if I'm wrong, the Lord, please forgive me. 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. God must really love me. Boy, he must really love me. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's another heresy going around. They're saying, uh, now this is a church. God's telling a church to repent. And you got people like Stephen Anderson who will tell you the repentance Repent means to change from unbelief to believing. So you're telling me this church is an unbelieving church and God wants them to believe now? No, the church believes. They may be lukewarm, they might be cold, but they're still the church. Verse 20. No, repent means to turn from your wickedness. I don't care what Stephen Anderson says. Verse 20. Jesus speaking, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You know, uh, when the Lord says to buy, uh, it looks like it's some kind of a spiritual type of thing because, let's face it, the gift of God is a gift. You don't buy a gift. You might buy a gift for somebody, but I don't know. So let's go back to Matthew 25 and uh, let's see. All right, so, verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut, just like it was on the ark. God's hand closed the door of the ark. See here, God shuts the door. Remember, God, uh, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and you open it up, and he'll come in to sup with you, and you with him. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Oh, boy, I can make a whole sermon out of this one. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, Luke 6, 46, Jesus asked a question. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Why do you call Jesus Lord and you don't do what he says to do? Hmm. Good question. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? All right, back to Matthew 25, 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, the foolish ones, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he, Jesus, answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Who are you people? I don't know you. Oh, yeah. That's the Bob paraphrase. 13. Watch therefore, for ye know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Huh. So... 
let's take a look at something here. All right, somebody sent me this in an email, and uh, I thought I would expand on it a little bit, but I'm going to read you what they wrote. And I think it's pretty good. I mean, I, I, I liked it, you know, because this, this parable or story always confused me. I was like, how do you buy oil, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God? How, how do you buy that? You know, but I, I, it has to be a spiritual type thing. Uh, are we buying it with our time? Are we buying it with our effort? Um, you know, you, you treasures in heaven. All right, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 18. Uh, and verse 18, Luke 18, 18. And a suit, certain ruler asked him, Jesus, asking Jesus, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is uh, none is good save one that is God. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, see, Jesus is telling you that he's not God. That only God is good. That's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is asking this guy, are you acknowledging that I am God? Because 1 Timothy 3.16 says, uh, God was manifest in the flesh. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus forgive, gave sins. You know, Jesus did all these miracles to prove who he was. Yeah. Why callest thou me good? None is good save one that is God. Are you acknowledging that I am God come in the flesh? That's what I see. That's my interpretation. Of course, anything Jehovah's Witnesses teach is probably the opposite is true. Maybe not everything, but yeah. And by the way, uh, by the, way the Seventh Day Adventist root, uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church has the same roots as the Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh yeah. So Jesus is talking to this rich ruler. Verse twenty. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Okay. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Oh, you know, you're almost there, but there's one thing you lack. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And you know, there's heretics today that will tell you that the, the eye of the needle is a gate in Jerusalem where you have to bend down your head a little bit. Uh, when you're, you know, when you're riding your camel, you and the camel have to bow your heads just a little bit to make it through that, that, that gate. They call that the eye of the needle. I don't think so. No, I think they're talking about an actual needle and thread and guys if you don't know what a needle and thread is uh, go to a, a tailor's shop or a seamstress sh shop and ask them to show you a needle and thread yeah uh, because well, why is that because rich people count on they 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 count on their money well not counting their money but they depend on their money money opens doors right I mean, let's face it, I've seen the ugliest looking guys, fat, ugly, obnoxious, with the most gorgeous girls in the world. Why? Because they had money. Well, probably stole it, but yeah. It is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. 
And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with man, impossible with men, are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Verily I say to you that there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. So when you sell what you have in this world, I guess you're buying treasure in heaven. I guess that's, yeah, something along that. So, I don't know. All right, let's go read what uh, this gal wrote. The Parable of the Ten Virgins. Quote, Five of them were wise, born-again, spirit-filled followers of Christ who were on fire for the Lord and continued to read and study the Holy Scriptures and remained ready and prepared for the Lord's return. Five of them were foolish, lukewarm Christians who were worldly, worldly, and did not care to read and study the Holy Scriptures, so they were not prepared for the Lord's return. They that were foolish took their lamps, the word, Holy Bible Scriptures, and took no oil, no light, no Jesus, no Holy Spirit with them. In Psalms 119 and verse 105, Thy word is a lamp. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Is the light oil? Is the oil light? The oil creates light or keeps it burning inside the lamp. Jesus is the light of the world and Jesus is also the word. But the wise took oil. Jesus, the light of the world, Holy Spirit in their vessels, the body temple with their lamps, the word, the Holy Bible and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. Luke warmness. We want what you have. How did you become on fire for the Lord? We want to be born again and spirit filled for the Lord has returned. But the wise answered saying, not so lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell. Go back to your fake pastor and buy for yourselves. I can't give you what I have. You have to find it on your own. Go buy a King James Bible and read it quickly. You should have been reading and studying all this time and following the Lord Jesus to be, to be prepared for his return. Go and figure it out quickly. And while they went to buy, pray, repent, read, study, question mark, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. The true born again, spirit filled Christians were ready and went with him to the marriage. Oh yeah. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. You didn't care about me. You didn't want to follow me. You cared about your soap operas and baseball and money and your boat and vacations and your job, etc. You didn't have any time to spend with me or my word, reading or studying or preparing. Oh, yeah. And then Matthew eight twelve. But the children of the kingdom, the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These are not the devil's kids. These are the children of the kingdom. Revelation 3.16 So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Revelation 7.23 And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What is iniquity? Lawlessness. God's law. You know, what did God say? The two commandments, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Somebody sent a memo to the Seventh-day Adventist church because they don't believe that. No. So, 
Uh, excellent Bible study, by the way. Um, I'm going to call you PJ. PJ, very excellent. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it, this is the most reasonable explanation of buying oil that I've ever heard. So I don't know. There's a, trust me, people, there's a lot of things I do not know in the Bible. And, uh, you know, when I get it all figured out, I'll let you know. But uh, don't count on it in this life anyway. So, all right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.